Hello and welcome to another installment of Biology in the Basement. Special edition, you teach the class here with Mr. Andrako being your conduit due to our situation of learning at home week two. We're going to talk about reptiles as you can see here. Lily and Sydney have put together a great presentation that I can't wait to show you. Um, but of course, to get started, we need a fact of the day. So here goes. During the Great Depression, people used horses to tow their cars around because it was too expensive to buy gas. And of course, once they got those cars, who needs a wagon anymore? Um, so I guess they just used their um, cars as wagons <laughs> towed by horses. It's kind of a funny thought. Anyways. Um, this is a great example of a high-quality presentation, um, just like Lily and Sydney are very direct and to the point. This presentation is as well direct and to the point, and it also looks real nice, too. So, uh, they covered all of the stuff that I needed right on the first page, so you guys can just... Uh, kick back. I'll just point out a few things, right? They are in the class, Reptilia, right? So we're talking about a class, right? We got domain, kingdom, phylum, class. So now we're looking at the class called Reptilia, and they've got the definition, what they eat, where they live, and all of their subgroups. Now, most of these you guys have heard of, just like we talked about with the amphibians, right? Amphibians, you mostly think of the frogs and toads or the newts and salamanders. But then there's this other group called Sicilians, those creepy worm things that freak me out. Um, same thing here. When you think of uh, reptiles, you think of your turtles. You think of your lizards and snakes. You think of your crocodiles. But then there is this also this other group of kind of weird lizard things that are nothing like other groups. Obviously, their adaptations are skill, uh, scales. They have well-developed lungs. They can um, conserve water very well, right? Because they're mostly found in desert places as well as they are where we get into internal fertilization and eggs with actual shells. All right, so here we go. Pretty much to the point, right across the board, multi-celled. They have a backbone. They have an internal skeleton. They have a brain. They have a spinal cord, and they have nerves. So that's all you really have to write for the nervous system section, brain, Spinal cord, nerves. Circulatory system and chambers of the heart. These guys all have a three-chambered heart. Um, there actually are some crocodiles or alligators that may have a four-chambered heart. As we've talked before, uh, scientists hypothesize that dinosaurs were also um, most likely warm-blooded and had a four-chambered heart a little bit different than the reptiles of today. Digestive system is continuous, goes in one end, out the other. They have very similar structures that we do, but a lot of these simpler guys have more referred to as a gizzard and not really a set um, uh, digestive tract of intestines and things like that that we do. Uh, respiratory system they breathe through their lungs. Their sensory organs are similar to ours, so you can say five senses plus, of course, the Jacobson's organ. That is what the tongue is doing in a snake, is it's going in and it's using this Jacobson's organ to lubricate as well as process the senses that it is feeling out there in nature because sometimes it's too hot, it's too sunny, it's hard to see or whatever. And so this Jacobson's organ is a great way for it to, to, to detect other chemicals that are in the air. 
course, these guys are cold-blooded. They lay eggs. They have internal fertilization. Okay, so this is where we start to, um, without lack of a better term, insert tab A into slot B um, to ensure a more successful fertilization, right? This is a step up in all of the species from here on out. It sounds gross, but it does ensure um, a more successful chance of not only fertilization, but protection because the babies are inside mom's body as opposed to just sitting on a stream bed. So this is a big step up. Nope. Do they care for their young? That's a great answer. Most do not. Some will protect a nest. Some will, um, you know, you know, we see those pictures of the, you know, the baby caimans inside of mama's mouth, but it is relatively rare for them to care for their young. So there you go. Great presentation uh, talking about reptiles. And when I return, we will be talking about the mammals. Take care.